Well, Karuna Anandhi, advocate of the Supreme Court, who has been one of the prime uh, petitioners in this case, joining us on NDTV today. Uh, Karuna Anandhi, just looking at some of the details of Justice Hari Shankar's judgment in particular, uh, I mean, some of the things that, you know, he has said, uh, that sex between a husband and wife is sacred, uh, that introducing into the marital relationship the possibility of the husband being regarded as the wife's rapist, uh, in my view, is completely antithetical to the very institution of marriage. Now, isn't this the problem uh, when there seems to be a free pass given to husbands to force themselves on their wives? Are we still asking this question in the 21st century? Um, it appears that we are. And but this, I'm also hopeful that this is why we have the multi-layer system in the judiciary and this is why also actually that we approach the High Court at the first instance so that any what we see as errors uh, can be corrected as we go forward. The difficulty, of course, is that women are being raped as we speak. And the exception to Section 375 says that married rapists have a conjugal right to penile vaginal rape and also anal rape and gang rape, right? Because let's be clear, a man who is a woman who is married to her um, her rapist um, can't prosecute him for gang rape because it's not rape. And we had in fact presented a fact pattern to the Honorable High Court in which this had happened, where a man had facilitated gang rape and had you know gang raped his his wife himself, and. Yes, it's an unusual case, but how important is it that, that it be recognized, that we recognized as rape, that forced in and rape be recognized as rape, that even if a woman doesn't feel like having sexual intercourse with her husband that night, that that be recognized as rape. Absolutely. Uh, you know, but do you see hope when you see Justice Shakhtar's uh, uh, judgment, for instance, that there are voices in the judiciary out there that are listening to what petitioners like you are saying, that are listening to women? Uh, under no circumstances, and I say this very strongly, can it be okay for any man, husband or not, to force himself on a woman? Uh, what don't these people understand about consent? I think that what also gives me hope is the fact that Justice Shakhtar's very robust judgment also reflects what is currently, in my view, the constitutional position. Because judgments of constitutional bench of this, uh, the Supreme Court, judgments like Joseph Shine, um, judgments like, but also judgments like Navde Johar and judgments like the Puttaswami judgment, they are very clear about a woman's right to intimate decision making, to sexual autonomy, to the freedom to choose. And so in the current circumstance in 2022, I think what we will be saying, you know, and what, what I think that we must ask ourselves is that in taking away a woman's right to say no, that we are also taking away her ability to say a joyful yes to her husband. And we are then therefore reducing married women to sexual objects and legal subjects within a marriage. Absolutely. This is why men's organizations are standing with us. A number of men's organizations are standing with us and saying that we want to have that joyful mutual yes in our marriage that we don't want to be in a position where legally speaking, we are forcing ourselves on our equal you know, partner wives every day because the law is such. One of the arguments that those who uh, you know, have, have made, in, in, and I believe Justice Hari Shankar's uh, judgment is also being interpreted this way, is that it's not for the courts to create a new offense in the law, which is what it would amount to if a husband would also be uh, you know, uh, accused of rape. And therefore, that is the domain of the legislature. How would you look at that question? So, both the Supreme Court judgment in Shaira Banu and the in Navde Johar are very clear that where the legislature fails to protect individual rights, the courts and the constitution exist 
for this reason. The fundamental rights of this country are such that a hundred people may say that people with green hair should be killed, but the court will protect that one person against a hundred people, against a hundred thousand people, against a billion people's views. That is why our constitution exists. That is why our constitutional courts exist. Well, Karna Nandi, this fight now moving to the Supreme Court. I don't know how many years that might take, but good luck to you and, and to the other petitioners Thank who you. are fighting that good fight. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.